In Lesson 4, we looked at the idea of planes of tone, a central concept in orchestration. In particular, we mentioned that all the elements in orchestration aren't equal. There's always a foreground and often several background layers. One kind of background layer that's particularly rich is what I call orchestral movement. Usually this acts as an accompaniment to the foreground. Here's an example from the first movement of my fourth symphony. This is a varied return of an earlier idea. Let's listen to it in the original form. While the strings, the timpani, and the clarinet are more or less the same as they were, the new background texture and the harp and the vibraphone changes the character completely. This is an example of what interesting figuration can add to the music. In fact, one of the best ways to judge the level of an orchestrator's craft lies in how they treat these background accompaniment layers of the texture. The best orchestrators, like Ravel, Mahler, or Shostakovich, put a great deal of work into refining the orchestral background result is a richness that can't be achieved any other way. So what are the basic principles behind this kind of figuration? There are actually not that many fundamental types of figuration. The main three possibilities are repeated notes, arpeggios, and scales. But the details of how they're arranged make an enormous difference. Let's compare two versions of a repeated note accompaniment. Here's a basic version, simply making the harmony into repeated notes. It's not bad, but it could be a lot better, creating a much stronger character. Now a more refined version. The main differences here are the rhythm and the timpani. Rhythm and orchestration are very powerful ways to create musical character. When the repeated chords are totally predictable, the listener is less involved than when they're repeated with a richer rhythmic motive, as in the second version. And for the uneasy character I wanted to create, this motive is better than just the basic repeated notes. The timpani add a darker color to the whole. The point here is to play with all the aspects of the music in ways that reinforce the desired character. Of course, this takes time and thought. When we look at a first-rate orchestrator or composer, we observe a kind of generosity in the amount of work they put into these background layers. Arpeggios are the second main kind of accompaniment figuration. Here again, the details make all the difference. Here's a very basic realization of a cello melody accompanied by clarinet arpeggios. This is pretty boring, very formulaic. Again, the main problem is that it's totally predictable. Now let's improve it a bit. This is better. Now the clarinet has more of a counterpoint, not just bare arpeggios. The arpeggio motive is still there, but it's enriched by some non-harmonic tones. But even this could be better still. The previous version was a bit dry. Adding the second clarinet with longer note values below the first one smooths out the texture and makes it richer overall. And that's the goal. You will have noticed that often the difference between a boring formulaic version and a really good one lies in the use of some non-harmonic tones and also of occasional rests. 
both of these simple techniques add interest to the secondary lines. It's important, however, that they be used in consistent ways, creating regular motives. The accompaniment with just a lot of random events thrown together it would distract from the main line. Getting the right dosage of predictability and unpredictability is an art, and it's best learned in counterpoint studies. Good counterpoint is not about multiple equally prominent lines all happening at the same time. Rather, it's about planning the way the musical interest moves around in the texture. In the kind of texture we're talking about here, accompaniment, too much novelty and unpredictability create problems. The composer should always know where the listener's attention will go and how to direct it. My name for the kind of lines we're talking about here is quasi-counterpoint. Lines that aren't totally predictable, but that offer enough interest and contrast with the main line to enrich the texture, making it worth listening to more than once. At the same time, they don't complete with the foreground for the listener's attention. In our next lesson, we'll look at scales as background, and also at the importance of background resonance.